Hello there, it's me, Rama, and this is an update to my Save System plugin where I've added native support for level streaming. When I say native, I mean I spent hours looking through UE4 source code trying to figure out one particular bit of information, which is now available to you through my plugin, which is to know at any time for any actor what streaming level are they from. And I now figured out how to do that. Man, I just went through this UE4. I'm not doing it again. This is staying in the recording. Where is my UI? Show up, thing. See how I'm clicking touch and it's not showing up and it's not in the thing? I had just determined the fix for this, for which I restarted this video. Where I'm entering rage mode. Get ready. That means lots of flowers being thrown in every direction. Come on, UE4, where is it? No, click, double. It's not anywhere. Where did the thing go? I, how do I get this to show up? I've used this. I've used this engine before. Come on, thing, work. This is. You're staying with me through this one. I'm not giving this up like I did last time. I just went through this. Hi, four thirteen. Could you? This is. Is this four four? This is four fourteen now. Four fourteen. Could you please work, so I can do this video. Show me where the UI went. And someone's gonna post in the in the in the video chat like, "Hey, Ram, it's easy. Just click the button that you weren't looking at." I don't see the button I'm not looking at. Do you? Where is it? Show up. Anything? There. Do you know what happened? I don't know. All right, let's go. <laughs> One specific bit of information, which is, in fact, <laughs> I bet a lot of people are thinking, I thought that only happened to me. It even happens to Rama, too? Yeah, it does. All right. <laughs> what do you think the UE4 beta was all about? <laughs> I'll just let you imagine. So here we go. Whenever you want to know what streaming level, people are thinking all sorts of things now. Whenever you want to know what streaming level a actor came from, I'm keeping this video. I'm not doing it again. I already did it once, and the UI system screwed up then too. All right, this is how you find out the information you always wanted to know that you couldn't find out before, which is any actor. What streaming level file are you from? Like, if you have a file, an actual map called Stream 3, now this will return Stream 3 for you. A little hidden feature you probably didn't know is that in Pi, all the levels get renamed, the instances of them. So you should uh, keep in mind that all of these names are going to match whatever is shown right here, whether you use Pi or not. Package game, UE4 editor, I take care of all that for you internally. It's a mess, but I take care of it for you. So that you just get Stream 3 whatever. So then you can know, okay, that actor was from Stream 3, and everything is fine. And uh, you would never know that there was a huge difference between Pi and the package game. Trust me, there's all sorts of differences. Three things are all different. One, playing your game in Pi is its own unique experience. It's a completely simulated environment. It's not actually the real game. Then, when you play the game with the editor closed, using, um, you know, click on U project. Where's my project here? Uh, when you click on your U project and you say... Uh, launch game. That's completely different. It uses a completely different system and the levels are named differently. Then when you package the game, all the assets have not been cooked, all the editor data is removed. There, are, All of these are different. I will give you the same name every time, but trust me, that's not automatic. That is concerted effort on my part. Uh, all done for you. And by the way, this update is free, just for the record. You just have to endure me ranting about various things that don't work as they should. Alright, so like the UI, for example, and level streaming. Oh my god, can you tell me why does the level streaming go from the camera instead of the position of the actor? Does that make sense? Does it? I'm not sure if it does or not. Because if I, like, move... <laughs> is weird. I don't get that. See, the actor didn't change position. I rotated the camera, and then the streaming volume decided I wasn't there anymore. Is Does that make sense? Is that like that coal, if the cat's in a box and you're looking at the box and the cat is there, but if you don't, it's not? That's a physics thing, right? Is that what it is, or is it just my in my head that the streaming volume should count your player character, not just where your camera is? I'll let you think about that one. In the meantime, here's a demo of level streaming. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three, save! Alright, I have saved where I'm on a streaming volume, right? This thing. And now I'm going to unload it. 
And now I'm going to go over here to a completely different streaming level, which decides that if the camera's not there, that you don't exist anymore, even though the character is clearly standing on it. And I'm now going to reload the other level. There's clearly two threads going on here. <laughs> I'm multi-threading! Okay, ready? Load! So, what just happened? Is first of all, I loaded the state of the streaming level, which is the, the turtle, right? This is the turtle streaming level. And now, when I go back over here, that thing is no longer... <laughs> that thing is no longer loaded, right? So I'm going to... <laughs> Let's just load it. Okay, see, it worked. Okay, next example. Let's say that you have a situation where, see this other level here? This level is not loaded using streaming volumes, which I clearly have complaints about how they work. This level is loaded on choice. You specifically decide when they load, right? So I can unload it here, load it over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate various actors here, which I'm saving the state of using the Roma save system. Now I'm going to close it. Now what you'd expect when I reopen it is that those green things will still be lit. However, if you've tried to do this already, you've probably noted preview, high preview, um, you've probably noted that it's not actually going to reload the green things, it's just going to reload the raw state. The reason for this is because UE4 doesn't have a built-in save system for streaming levels, which is why I wrote it for you just now. It was complicated. Look, it works! I'm actually reloading the save state for you. Now, how does that work? You're probably wondering. Or you might be laughing too hard. Let's go see. So when you click these actors, what I'm doing is I am loading the streaming level or I'm unloading it. However, I'm doing one additional thing, which is I'm checking if a, level ex if a save file exists for this streaming level all this structure you can set up in your own way and then I'm loading its state after streaming it in. Now because you click this handle level streaming I'm asynchronously loading the level, the sub level, stream 3, making sure that it loads, waiting for it to load. Once it's loaded then I, I go through all the actors and load their state. Now the reason this is important is because this isn't that easy. Imagine you have a huge level it takes you know 10 seconds to load if you try to load the rest of the save data too early, it's not going to work, but I handle it all for you in code so that you just say handle level streaming and I wait for it to load and then I load the save state. In a large file, that'll in a large level, that'll make a big difference. That asynchronous load process that I'm implementing behind the scenes is going to save you a lot of time. Now, when you are ready to unload a streaming level, then you should make sure you save before you unload the streaming level. Notice the... Um, is that a verb? Before? Save before. Adverb? Whatever. You should state change. It's a state! Before, not after. And here it is. Save before you unload. Okay? Get this order right and you're set. <laughs> I know I'm overemphasizing it, but seriously, it's the kind of thing that... Well, I'm Rama on the forums, I did this... Hey, please, just watch the video. Do it before. And then also make sure you load, and then after you try to load the secondary state. Because if you do it like this, it's not going to work, because the level hasn't been loaded yet. I know all these things sound obvious, but trust me when you've answered a lot of uh, questions as I have, you just want to make everything clear. Partly because there might actually be a language barrier at play here. So I'm doing the graphical thing as well. So notice the graphical ordering here. That's very important. Now as far as the level names go, you can pick anything you want. But you might be thinking, well, what if you have a different save file and a different sublevel? You probably want to use a folder structure and some kind of naming scheme of your own, like save one stream three or something. Actually, that's the level name. Never mind. This thing, the actual file name, you want to be like level one or, or save one because uh, you're going to have to set up some system for that that I can't decide upon automatically. I'm giving you the raw toolkit, the paints, and you can make the painting however you want. These are the raw tools. You decide the file structure yourself because, frankly, the user's not going to specifically know when you unstream a level. It's your job to save it as the game designer. You have to know, oh, I need to save this. Why do you have to do this? Because UE4 destroys the actors when you unload the level. They no longer exist in their state can 
can't be retained. So you have to save when you unload a level if you want the actors to be remembered at all. So kind of a nuance, but very important to keep in mind that you lose those actors when that level stream gets unloaded. They're gone. So make sure you save before. And then when you're ready to load, you're going to have to remember that, okay, this is the save file I'm currently on. You know, I need to load this version of it at, from file. So these details are kind of important to think about, but you could think, you could approach it many different ways on for your own project. Here's the tools. I can't take it any further without, you know, basically writing a section of the game for you that might interfere with how you actually chose to structure things. So here's the raw tools. There's one other aspect to this which I still need to cover. Now that all the UI is working, I'm going to close it. Oh god, is it ever going to load again? Let's find out. Okay, ready? Uh, actually, I don't even need to load the UI here. So you see this nice lovely bundle of things. They each have a globally unique identifier, which you need to make sure that you uh, set uniquely. And let's say you want to add one more. I showed this in a previous video. You might think, hey, it has a thing, I'm set. But you, cop you, you alt dragged it, so it's the same. It duplicated exactly, so you need to generate a unique ID. Okay, so now they're totally different unique identifiers, everything is fine. Let me look at that one more time. Did 414 fix that issue? Let's just see. Let's all try it. Oh, remember this? I, I, this is what I was all excited about last time. I think it's because of that. See the difference? All I did was just change this kind of localized context to what I was focused on. Alright, that's 83 name B. Are these exactly the same? They look the same to me. So that's alt drag. Make sure you manually duplicate again one more time. When you alt drag, then you need to do this. Just generate a new one. And this is for power ups. This is for any persistent actor that isn't part of the level blueprint. And you're going to want to make sure you do this. Um, it's not optional if you want the streaming to work correctly. You can't. You can do it in a constructor script, but you can't do it in sort of like a blue, blue utility or something. You have to manually click those or do it in a constructor script. But again, the constructor script won't run when you duplicate. So make sure those things all have unique IDs and then it will work as you'd expect. And you can do this. State retained. Hey, let's add another one. Let's add that one and let's add this one. All right. I probably want the one in the back, but too late now. Okay, ready? Actually, let's exit. And actually, let's make this demo a little more complex. So we have the, the new ones are added now. See that? Now let's make it take it one step further. Let's go over to the streaming level whose ground is going to work perfectly. Hold breath. All right. OK, so I'm going to save with this level streaming state, right? The, this sublevel is loaded, and the main level, and that thing. OK, save. All right. Now, remember, I manually was loading this one by clicking on those pillars. It happened to be loaded at the time that I saved, right? But normally I would have to click these pillars manually. It's not part of level streaming volumes. It's not something that's just going to automatically load for you. But ready? Watch it work. Ready? Go! It's there! So I am handling the level streaming for you as much as I possibly can. And this is the result. Very easy built-in support for level streaming. The only complexity, of course, is when you unload a level. And you should unload the levels yourself because you need to save before you unload them. If you have a streaming level that has data, state information that you want to save, you shouldn't use those iffy volumes that I was complaining about earlier with the camera thing. You should just do it yourself. Just manually unload or load them so that you can do the extra things. And that's the entire setup. That's it. Other than picking out your file structure and sort of deciding how you want to associate these sort of smaller files with a larger save file, the rest is done for you. So I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed my ranting and raving. You can look forward to that in the next video because it seems to happen rather routinely. All right, and this is my C++ uh, video capture system. And I've just filmed this very long video. Now going to test 
for your entertainment, whether or not the audio and video really synced up. So I'm going to end the video with a click. Let's see if the video ends when you hear the click. Ready?